It's like they say, if you want to make a good bottle of vodka, you gotta pull off a few heads. Hi, it's Ryan from Nights Around a Table. Here's how you play Distilled. You and your friends have each inherited an abandoned distillery from a distant relative and are determined to restore it to its former glory. You'll upgrade your distillery, research recipes, and buy ingredients to brew booze in your giant vat, which you'll store in different types of barrels and sell in different types of bottles in order to distill more exotic and valuable hooch. Each batch of giggle juice you sell earns you cash and points, which you'll use to expand your operation. Along the way, you'll pick up points from secret and public goals, special bonuses at the top of your board, and meta points from the upgrades you purchase. At the end of seven rounds, you melt your remaining cash down for spirit points, and whoever has the most points wins. Here's your dusty old distillery and the character you're playing. Each distiller identity has a special ability and hails from a different part of the world, either the Americas, Europe, or Asia and Oceania. Your character also comes with a special family recipe for distilling a signature type of tipple that no one else in the game can make. That recipe can be enhanced with a special signature ingredient, which you'll have to earn by taking a certain action later on. You'll improve the distillery itself by adding upgrades and specialists in these three slots. The ingredients you collect go here, and the barrels and bottles you need to brew and bundle your booze go here. Certain types of spirits need to be aged at least one round before you can sell them. Well, that happens here in your warehouse. You also get this recipe card on your tasting flight. Off the top of the game, you only know how to distill moonshine, vodka, and your signature recipe, but you can eventually learn more recipes and expand your repertoire. Your starting money and ingredients vary depending on which character you play, but everyone kicks off with a metal barrel and a generic glass bottle, along with three secret goal cards to guide your strategy. One player gets this start player marker, which determines turn order. Paverson Games has sent me some amazing upgrades to Distilled, some of which you can order from the company website. So instead of cardboard coins, how about metal coins? Wooden cubes? How about metal cubes? Check out this neoprene mat. What about a fancy first player marker? Boring black t-shirt? How about a Distilled shirt? You can also get themed coasters to accompany your game, along with Distilled shot glasses to hold all your uh, chocolate milk. Uh Woo! Let's play! In the middle of the table, there are two markets, the basic market and the premium market. The basic market has all the cheapest ingredients and barrels you'll need just to keep the lights on, while the premium market has distillery upgrades, fancy ingredients, and special bottles and barrels that will help you earn more money, perks, and points. The truck next to the market acts as the discard pile for these three rows, and every round, the rightmost card in each row drops off, so get this stuff while it's hot. There are four phases in the game. The market phase, where you buy stuff. The distill phase, where you make your liquor. The sell phase, where you bottle it up and hawk it for money and points. And the age phase, where you add special flavor cards to the liquid courage stewing in your warehouse. We'll go over each phase in detail, but I'm gonna flip the script and show you how the last three phases work first, just to give some context and meaning to the market phase. Phase two, the distill phase. After the market phase, where you buy all your ingredients, items, upgrades, and recipes, you get a shot at generating joy juice. So you'll have some ingredient cards down here in your pantry. This section is your washback, the gigantic vat where the distillation process happens. You need to fill up all three slots with at least one card. Yeast here, sugar here, and water here. There are three different types of sugar in the game. Grain, fruit, and plant sugars, and we'll see how those come into play shortly. You just need to have at least one of those types of sugar in your wash bag to get started. As your distillery grows, you'll have more options, and you can put as many cards of the correct type as you want into these slots. But one in each slot is the minimum. The yeast and water ferments your sugar into alcohol. So the next step is to add one alcohol card from the common deck for each sugar you put into your wash bag. One sugar, one alcohol card. Five sugars, well, five alcohols. Then you scoop up all of the cards and give them a good shuffle. If you don't trust yourself to shuffle so few cards honestly, you can have everyone hand their stack to an opponent to shuffle and then hand them all back. Whichever way you decide to do it, you have to remove the top and bottom card from your stack, which represents removing the impure foreshot and fate or heads and tails of the batch. Those two removed cards go back into your pantry for a future round. 
What you're left with is the heart of your distillation, which you'll store in a barrel and bottle up to sell in the next phase. But first, you gotta find out what you made. That's where the recipe card comes into play. Off the top of the game, you know how to make moonshine, vodka, and your signature recipe, but during the market phase, you'll be able to spend money to learn new recipes. No matter how badly the distill phase goes for you, at a minimum, you'll always have made either moonshine or vodka. So check it out. Let's say you put the minimum required cards into your washback. A yeast card, some type of sugar, and a water card. You add the requisite one alcohol for your one sugar. Then you shuffled them all up, and the four shot and faint you randomly removed from the top and bottom of the stack were the sugar and one of the other three cards. Your resulting brew has no sugar in it, so you made moonshine, which can't contain any sugar. Let's rewind time and say it went some other way. The four shot and faint you removed were two other cards, and that one sugar card remained in the heart. Well, that means you made vodka, because vodka requires at least one sugar. So you splay the cards out like this. Both moonshine and vodka need to be stored in a metal barrel, and neither of them can be aged before you sell them. Add the metal barrel card, which could be the default metal barrel you start the game with, or it could be a fancy metal barrel that you bought at the market. In the next phase, the sell phase, you need to add some kind of bottle to put it in. Again, this could be your default glass bottle, or it could be a funky one from the market. Finally, in turn order, grab a label matching whatever kind of batch you brewed. The recipes get more and more demanding the farther down the list you go. To make Brazilian cachaça, after paying to learn it, your stack has to contain at least one plant sugar, and it must not contain any other type of sugar. It has to be brewed in a metal barrel, and you can't age it. But Chinese baijiu requires at least three grain sugars, and can't have any other types of sugar in it. You have to brew it in a clay barrel, and you have to age it in your warehouse for at least one round. It's worth big points though. That's where the push your luck element to this game comes in. Let's say you learned how to make baijiu, and you spent the market phase buying all the ingredients in the clay barrel you'd need to make it. You spent the distillation phase putting one yeast card, one water, and three grain sugars into your wash back. Then you added the three alcohol cards, one for each sugar. You scooped up all your cards, gave them a good shuffle, and removed the four shot and faint back to your pantry, and uh-oh, one of the cards you randomly removed was one of the grain sugars you needed to make baijiu. With only two grain sugars, well, let's see. You could have made whiskey, but there are two problems. You don't know how to make whiskey. There's no cube here. And even if you did, whiskey needs to be aged in a wood barrel, and you don't own one. But you do know how to make soju, which requires at least two grain sugars, can't be aged, and has to go into a metal barrel. Oh, and you've got one of those. So, you make soju, right? Well, the problem with that is that the product labels are limited. There's only one label per player for each type of spirit, and two per player of moonshine and vodka. There's only one soju label left, and one of your opponents just made soju, and is earlier in the turn order than you are. So now, all the soju labels are gone. Well, you can still make soju, you just won't be able to put a soju label on it, so you won't be able to claim one of the powerful bonuses at the top of your board. If you desperately need one of those labels, well that means you have to fall back to making run-of-the-mill vodka instead and miss out on that pile of points making baijiu or soju would have brought you. That's if there are still some vodka labels left. Well, there are more vodka labels available than there are of the fancier stuff. To avoid a disappointing distillation, you could have added more cards than you needed to your washback. Maybe you could have added a bunch of water cards, or a bunch of yeast cards, or a bunch of grain sugars, because each card you add to your washback decreases the likelihood that one of the cards you remove is going to be one you really need. To guarantee that you make baijiu, you need to add five grain sugars, because if you're extraordinarily unlucky and the two cards you remove are two sugars, you'll still end up with the required three sugars to make that spirit. Of course, guaranteeing your success by adding more cards to the washback could be costly. As we'll see when we learn about the market phase, ingredients don't come cheap. If you have all the right stuff to make multiple types of devil's bevies, you choose the one you want to make. You can only distill one variety of grog in this phase. And now it's time to sell some swill. Phase three, the sell phase. Everyone figures out the distillation step simultaneously, but you sell your stuff in turn order, beginning with the starting player and going clockwise. 
when play comes around to you, you can either sell something or pass. Some recipes need to be aged, so you might have multiple things to sell when it's your turn, but you can only sell one thing when play comes around to you. That's because those recipe labels are limited and it can be a bit of a race. When play comes back around to you, you can sell something else. Look at the money symbols on all of the cards in your stack and on the recipe. Moonshine is worth an extra two bucks, while vodka is worth an extra one. None of the other recipes will get you additional money except your signature recipe. Then take the amount of money you earned from the supply. Next, collect your spirit points by counting up any yellow icons on the cards and on the recipe. This time it's reversed. Moonshine is only worth one point, while vodka is worth two. All of the other recipes get you an increasing number of points. Move your player token along the spirit points track by the amount of points you earned. Finally, send all the cards in the stack back to where they came from. Alcohol cards go back to that stack, basic ingredient cards go back to the basic market, and any fancy ingredients you used go to the truck, along with any fancy barrels from this row. If you sold your booze in a fancy bottle, hang on to that card in your bottle collection off to the side of your board. The bottle's not reusable, but it may be worth points to you at the end of the game. If you used your basic metal barrel and or basic glass bottle, well those cards are reusable. They go back to your storeroom. You can even use that bottle to sell something else in this phase when play comes back around to you. You get to keep the label too because it lets you unlock a bonus at the top of your player board. There are seven bonuses here, and you get either the perk or two points from whichever one you choose to cover up with your label. You can claim any of these bonuses just once per game. Covering this spot is the only way you can get your special signature ingredient into your pantry that might help you make your family's signature recipe. Phase 4, the age phase. If you made the type of spirit that needs to be aged before you sell it, well here's how that goes. After sending the top and bottom four shot and faint cards back to your pantry in the distill phase, and after the sell phase is over, you put all the cards in an empty slot in your warehouse. You don't need to include a bottle card because you're not selling it yet. It's not ready. Put the required barrel card on top of the stack and the label on top of that. The age phase goes in turn order. You take a random face down card from this flavor deck and slip it under the stack. Your fire water takes on different notes as it ages in your warehouse, and you won't know what it tastes like until it's time to crack open the cask and sell it to the public. Every time you reach the sell phase and you decide not to liquidate your liquid, then in the age phase, you add another flavor card to the bottom of its stack to age it even further. Each flavor card you add will earn you extra points when you finally do decide to sell and some of the better flavors will make your drink more valuable. Well, it's a surprise. Recipes with an aging icon on them need to be aged at least once, but you can keep aging them round after round, accruing one flavor card per age phase, which will crank up your score when you finally decide to sell. When you do sell an aged cask in a later round during the sell phase, you bust open the barrel and count up the money and points you earn as usual, but you get the added joy of seeing how your booze turned out. Some flavors are favorable and could earn you extra money, like a whiskey with nutty coffee-like notes. But maybe your warehouse is a little bit dank and your rum ends up tasting like salty manure? Uh, it happens. Count up the extra points those flavor cards give you. The longer it's aged, the more points your product will score. And then put those cards into the discard pile after you've sold. If you need to age a stack and both of your warehouse slots are full, you'll need to sell one to make room for the new batch. If the type of alcohol you made has a no aging symbol on the recipe, you have to sell it in the same round that you make it. You're not allowed to age it. Aged spirits are great because they get you more money and points in the long run, but each round you age them, you won't be earning the crucial income that you'll need during the market phase to buy ingredients and upgrades to help your struggling little business along. So there's definitely a risk reward balance to be struck. If you manage to distill your family's signature recipe, you get whatever points and perks are on that recipe label. That label works just like any other label, and you can use it to unlock a bonus or two points at the top of your board. You can only produce your signature recipe once per game, so make it count. Signature recipes can make use of your signature ingredient, which you can unlock by placing a product label on this bonus space. If you aren't able to snag the special ingredient, you can still make the recipe with the generic version of that ingredient. So you can make the single malt whiskey signature recipe using this special bear barley for extra points, or you can just substitute some regular old barley that you bought from the premium market, which is worth fewer points. 
Round End. Once the four phases of a round have finished, you check these public goals to see if anyone has met them. These spirit awards are drawn randomly at the beginning of the game, and they can earn you extra spirit points on the score track. If multiple players achieve the same award in the same round, you divide the points evenly among those players, rounding up. Then you flip the award so that no one else can earn it. Some of the private and public goals play around with locality. This one gives you points for collecting two labels from different regions. So you can distill a batch of soju and a barrel of gin. This symbol matches whichever region your distiller is from. If your distiller is European and you brew some moonshine, you've made European moonshine. Or maybe some Finnish Pontica. If your character is from the Americas and you make whiskey, well that's where the whiskey is from too. But most of the spirit awards that have you collecting regional labels exclude this homegrown symbol. It's the same story with the empty bottles you collect. If the bottle has this symbol on it, then the bottle is from your distiller's region, for the purposes of winning awards and earning a bottle collection bonus at the end of the game. Watch for clarifying language on the goals, though. If you didn't manage to sell anything this round, whether by choice or by circumstance, you can offer a tasting at your distillery to avoid falling too far behind. Cash in up to four points for up to four dollars, just so you have some spending money going into the next round. If you don't have the points to spend, well, you're hosed. In any case, advance the round marker and pass the start player token on clockwise. When you move out of round three, everyone has to discard one of their private goal cards. Probably choose the one you have the least hope of completing. Now that you understand what you're aiming for, let's circle back to the first phase of a round, the market phase. Phase one, the market phase. In the market phase, you get to go shopping with either your starting money or the money you earned from selling spirits or giving tasting tours in previous rounds. Beginning with the starting player and going clockwise, everyone gets to buy one thing. Either a card from the basic or premium markets, or a cube to learn a new recipe. Or you can pass, but if you pass, you're out for the rest of the market phase. Once play gets back around to you, as long as you haven't passed, you can buy another thing. And so it goes round and round the table until everyone has passed, and then you move on to the distillation phase. The basic ingredients are here. Yeast, water, grain sugar, plant sugar, fruit sugar, clay barrel, and wood barrel. And their prices are on these little red price tags. But the catch is that in any given market round, you can only buy two cards total from the basic market. Put them over here as you buy them to remember how many you've taken. And remember that when you distill in the next phase, you need to fill these three slots with one compatible card each, at a minimum, to make a viable product. If you're a little more well healed, you can buy a card from the premium market. Distillery upgrades are along the top row. Some are building upgrades and some are personnel, but all provide you a perk that you can start using right away, except for the ones that give you something off the top of every round. If there's no room at the inn, you can discard a card to make a spot for the one you just bought. That card is now gonzo, and it won't help you earn any private or public goals. Whenever you buy a card from the premium market, you slide over the other cards and pop a new one out to fill the gap. If you ever run out of cards, shuffle the discards from the truck. In this row, you can pick up ingredients to make better booze. These cards are souped up versions of your standard yeast, water, and sugar cards. Well, maybe they give you more points or more money when you use them to distill your next batch. Or they may even have special perks on them, but you just have to read the card. Along the bottom row are special items you can buy. Barrels and bottles that, again, improve your product and make it worth more money, perks, and points, and may help you fulfill public or private goals. Finally, you can buy knowledge of new recipes. The recipes are split into different standards, bronze, silver, and gold. To learn a new recipe, you have to buy the appropriate cube to check off the box. So to learn how to make whiskey, you need to pay four bucks for a silver cube. And place it here. Doing that unlocks that recipe for the rest of the game, so you can keep making whiskey as much as you like. You don't have to buy recipes in order down the tasting flight. You can jump way ahead and learn a gold recipe if you want to. But of course, you can't buy a bronze cube and put it in a gold recipe slot. At the end of the market phase, after everyone has passed, you churn the premium market by discarding the rightmost card in each row to the truck, sliding everything over, and dealing out new cards. The details. Well, that's the whole game in a nutshell, but there are a few fine points to learn that can have a big impact on your game. First, if you take yeast from the basic market, you get $1 to go with it. If you take water from the basic market, 
you get to turn up the top cars from any draw pile in the premium market and optionally buy it. This can help break up any log jams where the ingredient cards have gone stale and nobody wants them, but you just need like a fruit sugar or something to finish your recipe. Or maybe you're looking for a certain type of upgrade, or a bottle that's from a specific region. If you decide not to buy that card, you sink it to the bottom of its stack. If some sort of external ability, like a distillery upgrade or a staffer, lets you take a card from the basic market, you don't also get the perk on that card, like getting a coin or flipping up a card. It's possible that at the end of the distill phase, you wind up with one or two alcohol cards that you remove from your stack as the foreshot or the feint. In later rounds, you can put alcohol cards in either the yeast or water slots to help you distill your next product. So alcohol is semi-wild. Isn't that a perfect marriage of theme and mechanics? Incidentally, if you distill a stack and it doesn't have any alcohol cards in it, it doesn't mean you made non-alcoholic near beer or anything. Everything you make is presumed to be at least somewhat alcoholic, just like your Uncle Larry. Now, just before you're about to distill, you can trade in one ingredient or card from your board for an ingredient card of equal or lesser value from the basic market. So let's say you messed up and you realize you need another plant sugar to make rum, but you didn't buy enough during the market phase. Well, you can take this $6 bunch of grapes that you bought in the premium market and trade it in for this $1 hodgepodge of plants. It's a costly error, but at least that gives you a little wiggle room. But you can use this rule strategically. Maybe the recipe you're shooting for requires three or more grain sugars. You grab two of them from the basic market, and you need a third, but you're only allowed to buy two things from the basic market, and there are no grain sugars in the premium market. You could have taken a water card and pulled a card from the top of the premium ingredients deck, hoping it was a grain sugar, but well, that's a pretty big gamble. And even if it worked, that would still only get you two grain sugars. The water and sugar from the basic market means you hit your limit of two, plus the card you got from the premium market. So here's what you do. Get your two grain sugars from the basic market, and then buy the cheapest ingredient you can find in the premium market. Then, during the distill phase, trade that in for the extra grain sugar card you need from the basic market, and hope and pray you don't pull out one of the required sugars after you shuffle your stack. If you want to trade for an extra card from the basic market, it has to be an ingredient card. You can't trade for one of these item cards. And you can't trade in an alcohol or yeast card for a basic ingredient. That rule is restated right on those cards. And finally, when you cover this space with a label, you can discard one of the ingredients in your pantry, including an alcohol or yeast card, for any card in the truck. That's any discarded card from any row. So you could trade in this crappy mixed plants card to hire this market buyer specialist. Well, she did say she'd work for peanuts. End game. At the end of seven rounds, you distill various things on your board down to points. If you have any spirits aging in your warehouse that you didn't sell in the final round, you count up the points on that stack's cards, including its barrel and recipe. You don't get to bottle it and earn anything from the bottle. And you don't earn any money because you didn't sell it. You don't even get the flavor rewards because nobody got a chance to taste it. Instead, you'll just earn one point for each flavor card in the stack, which is a far cry from what you could have earned. You'll also have to forego one of the prizes from placing the label at the top of your board because you didn't sell. So plan your strategy carefully because distilling something that requires aging in the final round may not be your best plan of action. Then check out the region icon on all the bottles you used and collected during each of the game's cell phases. Two bottles from the same region gets you two points, then on up according to this chart. Remember that any bottles with this symbol on them are from the same region as your character. If you have at least one bottle from three different regions, you earn five points. Your distillery upgrades usually give you endgame points, so count those up. Then claim any points you earned from the private distillery goals that you started the game with. Labels stuck in your warehouse count towards these goals. You have to score at least one thing towards the goal. So for example, you couldn't achieve this goal for being the richest player at the end of the game if everyone was tied with zero dollars. Every five coins gets you a point, rounding down. Whoever has the most spirit points wins, and money breaks ties. If there's still a tie, all tied players claim the title of Master Distiller. Solo Mode You can play distilled solo, too. I won't go over all the details, but you're trying to chip your way through this barrel-shaped tree of goals. And some of the goals you achieve increase the number of points you need to score at the end of the game. 
You flip over cards to change the market state to simulate other players buying cards. The cards in the barrel are marked A, B, and C, and you can modify the solo mode difficulty level by using different combinations of cards in the tree. Setup To set up the game, lay out the basic market and its cards, the premium market and its cards, four per row with the truck at the end. Everyone takes a busted old distillery board and a marker in their chosen color, along with a clipboard and a player guide. Try not to fight over who gets the board with the doggy on it. Take three random distillery goals from the shuffled stack. You have a whack of tasting flights to choose from. They all have a letter in the corner. Make sure everyone grabs one with the same letter on it. Slot the tasting flight into your clipboard. The different tasting flights change the game up by combining different spirits and distillers from various regions. Flights A, B, and C give you a more balanced game, while the ones printed on the reverse side focus on a particular spirit or region. You can even design your own spirits and tasting flights on the Papers and Games website. The rulebook will tell you which distillers to use for the tasting flight you chose. Shuffle the distillers and deal two of these cards to each player. Everyone picks a distiller and discards the other card. Your distiller goes in your office. You start with your distiller's signature recipe label down here, and your distiller's signature ingredient off to the side. Remember, you don't have this ingredient yet. You can only acquire it by placing a label on this space at the top of your board later in the game. You do have a glass bottle and a metal barrel, and whatever starting resources are listed on the back of your distiller card. Deal three distillery goal cards to each player. Lay down the spirit board and put everyone's token nearby. You can use these chits to note when players score more than 50 or 100 points. Stack one label per player listed on the tasting flight you chose for this game, except for vodka and moonshine, which get two labels per player. So in a four player game using tasting flight A, it's four of these and eight of each of these. The round marker starts on round one. Randomly draw player count plus one spirit awards and place them face up. Money and cubes go nearby, along with the stack of alcohol and shuffled flavor cards. The first player is whoever volunteers to sit next to Uncle Larry at the wedding next weekend. That player gets the start player marker, while Uncle Larry gets a little handsy. And now you're ready to play Distilled. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.